Take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. So I'm going to go quick today so you have to pay attention. Turn to someone and say, pay attention. Turn to the other side and say, wake up. So I'm not going to take time to read the story there in Matthew chapter 14. You're, you're somewhat familiar. Let me just paraphrase it to you. It's the story of where Jesus uh, sent his disciples out on the boat across the sea. He was up on the mountain praying, and a storm came up. And the storm came up, and Jesus saw them where they were at. And the Bible says he went to them walking on the water. This is the story of Jesus walking on the water. And when Peter saw him coming, Peter said, if that's you, let me come out there. And Jesus said, come on. Peter got out on the water, and he took his eyes off as Jesus, and he began to sink. Jesus reached out his hand and picked him up out of that situation and got back into the boat with, with Peter and with the disciples. I want to talk to you this morning just, just for a few moments on the subject of in the middle of the storm. In the middle of the storm. Because I believe that some of you today are going through some storms in your life. You're going through some storms and some situations, so I want to try to bring some clarity today from this story in the Word of God that I think will open up our eyes, as it did for me as I began to look at it. We're familiar with it again, Jesus walking on the water, Peter walking on the water, but there's so much more that's contained within this story. Now, this happens right after Jesus had fed the 5,000. He had multiplied the fishes and the loaves and fed the 5,000. The disciples were there. They were the ones that were distributing the food. So they had seen one of the greatest miracles that we know of today out of a little boy's fishes and loaves that he was able to feed so many people. Jesus then sent the disciples away. He said, all right, you guys go get in the boat. Go on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus then, as he sent them ahead across the Sea of Galilee, again, that was directed by Jesus. Jesus told them. One says he commanded them to go. And when they got out there, a storm began to happen. Just because we are following the will of God does not mean that we're not going to face problems. Some people have this idea that, well, hey, if I get saved, everything's going to be all right. Let me just tell you right now, that is not the case. We are still living in this world. We're still facing the problems and the challenges of this world. The key is, is that we're not going through it by ourselves. And so here they were directed by God. They were in the perfect will of God. And they went out on that ocean and they faced a storm. Now, what did Jesus do? Jesus went to the mountain to pray. Because no matter what you're going through, let me give you good gospel news today. Jesus is praying for you. It says again in verse number 24, as the boat was already considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was great. Now, this was in the fourth watch. It's about 3 to 6 o'clock in the morning. It's the middle of the night. They were obeying God again, and I, I want to stress that because some people look at, well, you know, if I obey God, everything's going to go all right. And if I don't obey God, things won't go all right. Well, I understand that, but you're going to find problems in your life when you do obey God. And they were obeying God, and the storm came up. They did not give up. The storms of life make life hard, but you can't give up in the midst of those storms. Can I get an amen? Because it's the storms of life that help us develop character within our life. The Lord is far more concerned about the development of our character than he is about the comfort of our lifestyle. And if you're just in this thing to be comfortable, you're in the wrong thing, because life is not comfortable. In this world, we're going to face tribulation. We're going to face problems. And if there was no struggle, then we would remain weak. If you read the account in Mark chapter number 6, verse 48, it says that, the, speaking of the disciples, that they were straining at the oars. They were trying to get out of the storm. They, they, they couldn't rely upon the, the, uh, the uh, sail to do that. So they were using the oars to be able to do it. But it says they were straining at the oars. They were giving it everything that they had, but they weren't getting anywhere. Do you ever feel like you're not making any progress? Do you ever feel like in the middle of your storm, the problems and difficulties that you're going through, that you're doing everything you can, you're trying everything you can, you're giving it everything that you've got, but it, doesn't, it just doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere? And if you're not careful, that's when 
<laughs> discouragement sets in. I'm just, this, this is not working. I'm not getting here. Why is this happening to me? And when discouragement sets in, then that will lead to fear. Oh, no, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to get through that. And then what that will do, that will cause you to give up. But I want to remind you one more time, church, in the midst of your storm, Jesus is praying for you. The Bible says he is at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for us. It's in the middle of the storm. It's in that time, in that difficulty. You're not alone. You've got somebody praying for you. How many are glad that Jesus is praying for you in the middle of your storm? And in the middle of the storm, Jesus came to them. From one point, he's on that mountain overlooking. And I, I've been to that area where they believe that Jesus was, where he could look down and basically see all to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And it's a, it's a pretty tall mountaintop there, a big hill that is there, that he was up, no doubt, watching them there. And then the next thing it says, that he came walking to them on the water, in the middle of the storm. Jesus is not bound by the physical. He didn't need a boat to get to them. He came walking to them. Don't let the natural obstacles discourage you. You know, that, that can't happen. That's impossible to happen. That, well, yeah, that's impossible to man. But where man, it may be impossible. With God, all things are possible. Jesus doesn't work in the natural. He works in the supernatural. He came walking to them there on the water. Now, here's the point that I want you to think about. When he saw them down there and in the, in the middle of that storm and he was coming to them, Jesus had the ability and the power to stop the storm. He could have from that mountaintop just said to that storm, be still. But he did not stop the storm. He came to them in the storm. Now the disciples had just seen 5,000 people plus fed. They had seen miracle after miracle. They had seen him open blinded eyes. They had seen him even raise the dead. They had seen him work miracles for others, but now he was, they were about to experience him working a miracle for them. And that's really where the power of faith begins to work within our life. He wasn't going to stop the storm. He was going to reveal his presence in the storm. And maybe God in the middle of the storm that you're going through right now is trying to say, I want to show myself to you. I want to show you me in a supernatural way. I want to show you me in a way that you have never seen me before. So when Jesus came walking to them on the water, what was the reaction of the disciples? Well, it says when they saw him, they thought that they had seen a ghost. Now, the, the, the Jews had a superstition that if you saw a ghost or a spirit and they saw it at night, they, they thought that that meant evil things were about to happen to you. So they saw what they thought was a spirit. They saw it was a ghost that was coming. And immediately they went to their old way of thinking. They became gripped with fear. Instead of recognizing the power of God, they went back to their old way of thinking. They leaned to their own understanding. They went back to how they used to think and how it used to be. And friends, can I just tell you, in the times of your storms, don't lean to your own understanding. Don't go back to your old way of thinking. Don't lean to, oh, it's never going to happen. It's never going to get better. This is going to be the worst. We're going to die from this. We're going to be overcome. We're going to go broke. They're never going to come back. They're never going to find the Lord. Do not become gripped with fear. Don't lean to your own understanding. I believe in a God of the supernatural. I believe a God that knows how to accomplish what man cannot accomplish. And I don't care what they told me. I don't care what you told me. I don't care what the doctors told me. I don't care what the lawyers told me. I know what God has told me. And I'm not going to be overcome by fear. I'm not going to look at the natural. I'm going to look at the supernatural of what I believe God can do. So as they saw the response... Jesus saw the response of the disciples in fear. How was his response to them? He said in verse 27, he said, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And if I got a word for you today, if you're going through a storm in your life, just, just take courage. Take courage. God is with you. Do not be afraid. Don't let fear grip your life. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
And if we're not careful in the storms of our life, again, we'll lean to our understanding. Oh, they don't care about me. They don't love me. They're never going to come back. I'm never going to get well. And you'll look to that old way of thinking. And you've got to say, no, I'm not going to look to that. I know that he is the author and the finisher of my faith. And I know what he has called me to do. I know what he's directed me to do. And I'm going to do what he says he's, that he's told me to do. And I'm not going to allow fear to grip my life. Now, Peter was the first to respond when Jesus said that. And Peter responded with a little faith. Can I just tell you that's all it takes is a little faith? Matter of fact, it just takes faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed. And that's a little bit. That's all it takes. And every one of us have been given a measure of faith. So when people say, I just don't have the faith, let me tell you, you do have the faith. And we say it to this crowd over here. When people say, I don't have the faith, you just need to tell them, no, you do have the faith. The question is, what are you going to do with the faith you got? Because faith is like a seed. You've got to let it grow. Faith is like a seed that you've got to water it and you've got to provide for it. And that's why he says, oh, ye of little faith, but recognize that wasn't really so much about what you don't have. That is about the potential of what you do have. He say, no, you, you've got a little faith. You've got what it takes if you will activate that. If you'll plant it and believe it and believe for that. And so he said, Lord, if it's you, verse 28, if it's you, he's still a little bit of a doubt. He's not for sure totally. He's got a little bit of faith, though. He says, as if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Again, what activates faith in your life is not words. It begins with words, but it has to end in action. If that's you, Lord, tell me to come and I'll come. And the action of his faith was activated when he put into action the command of God. Because what did God tell him to do when he told him to do that? When he, when he, when he said that, uh, if, if it's you. See, Peter recognized that where he was is not where he wanted to be. He knew it was safer in the storm with Jesus than being in the boat with the disciples. Where do you run in the middle of your storm? Do you run back to your disciples? Do you run back to your homies? Do you run back to your old way of thinking? Do you run back to, well, that's why I feel safe and secure? Or do you say, no, wait a minute. Where I'm at is not where I want to be. This is not help me. These guys are going to go down. I want to go out to where Jesus is at because that's where I'm going to find hope. Do you try to survive in your present situation? Or do you take a step of faith and seek the presence of Jesus? Okay, now wait a minute. Let me bring you back to the, to the point of the story here. The storm had not ceased. All of this is happening in the middle of a storm. All of this is happening with the waves that are pushing and the, and, and the boat is rocking back and forth and they're basically trying to keep that boat afloat. And, and, and so as they're bailing water out and everything, Peter points his attention towards Jesus. But the storm had not stopped. So Jesus says to Peter in verse 29, well, come, come on. Jesus didn't stop the storm. He didn't say, hang on, Peter, hang on just a minute. Let me make it easier for you here. Let me, let me speak to the winds of the waves. Y'all calm down now. Peter's going to get out of the boat and walk for us there a little bit. He didn't do that. Jesus called Peter out of the boat in the middle of a storm. When everything would say, no, you don't get out of the boat right now. Of all times not to get out of the boat, you don't want to get out of the boat right now. Wave that they will consume you. They will take you under. This is not when you want out of the boat. But yet Jesus said, no, Peter, come on out here in the middle of the storm. Even when we are drawn closer to the Lord, the storm may still be at full strength. If you're waiting for the storm to stop, maybe God's waiting on you to get out of the boat. Maybe he's just saying, come on. Peter got out of the boat in the midst of the storm. And what happened? He walked on the water. The miracle happened in the middle of the storm. I said, the miracle happened in the middle of the storm. We're always, well, when it gets better, when it gets easier, when this happens, when that happens, when that. No, you need to step out on your faith right now. You need to follow the command of the Lord right now. And when he says, get out of the boat, you need to get out of the boat. The miracle happens in the middle of the storm. Our faith grows when we draw close to Jesus in the middle of the storm. 
So he got out of the boat, and as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he kept on walking. He, he was overcoming the circumstances. The circumstances were those waves. The circumstances were it just wasn't physically naturally possible for a man to walk on water. But as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he could walk on water. He could rise above the circumstances. He could do what no man thought that anybody ought to be able to do. But Peter, by the direction of God, stepped out on faith. And by that, he rose above the circumstances. Now, the problem was, is that Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. And when he took his eyes off of Jesus, what did he do? What did he do? What did he do? He didn't sink. Look at verse number 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and... What does it say? Oh, it's not up there. He said... It says, I'll read it to you then. I thought it was up there. But when he saw the wind, now is it up there? Now it's up there. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And what? 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 Beginning to sink. When, when he looked at the wind, he became fearful. He began to sink. But again, he didn't sink. He just began to sink. You, you, you. Uh, uh, you may be sinking, but you're not sunk. Oh, come on. Somebody, somebody help me a little bit here today. He didn't sink. He began to sink. And you may think I'm going down, but as long as you're in the presence of Jesus, as long as you're there, you may be beginning to sink, but you're not sunk. And here's what you got to do. You got to do like Peter did. You got to cry out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Because when he began to sink because of the circumstances that were around him, just like us, we need to return to the presence of Jesus. We need to get as close to, I'm, I'm amazed when people get to storms in their life, problems in their life. I've had people actually tell me this. Pastor, you know, I, I'll say, we missed you at church. Well, I know, Pastor, we're really going through a storm right now. So when we get through this, then we'll be back to church. Dummy, dummy, dummy. In your time of struggle, in your time of storms, when you're going through the problems and difficulties of life, don't move away from the presence of God. You need to get closer into the presence of God. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Not on people around you. The devil will do everything to distract you. The devil will do everything to pull you away because the devil knows that when you're walking with Jesus, when you're walking in the presence of Jesus, that's where miracles are going to happen in your eyes. You need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, Jesus wasn't calling Peter out of the boat so Peter would drown. He, he, he wasn't calling him out, okay, get out here and I'll get rid of you right now. Jesus was calling Peter out of the boat to improve his faith. Even when we began to sink, you've got to remember that Jesus is still right there, and all we've got to do is call out to him. I like the next verse where it says in verse 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Not later, not when I get around to it, but when he called out to him, immediately Jesus reached, which tells me he wasn't that far away from me. He was within an arm's reach of him. And can I tell you, God's hand is not short. I don't care how the winds may be blowing. I don't care how water may be coming up. I don't care what the circumstances are around you. I don't care where you are. You call out to Jesus and he can reach down and pick you up immediately out of that situation. And what happened then? Jesus and Peter walked on the water together. Now, wait a second. You would think, okay, if I was going to do the miracle, this is when I'd do the miracle. But he didn't. The winds and waves were not stopped when Peter was picked up by Jesus. They walked through the rest of the storm together. 
Here they are out there, the disciples in the boat trying to save themselves. Winds are, are, are blowing. The waves are splashing. Peter has just begun to sing. Jesus gets him out of that. And now together, Jesus and Peter, arm in arm, are walking through a storm. Three Hebrew children went through a fire. Daniel in a lion's den stopped the mouth. In the middle of your problem, in the middle of your situation, in the middle of your storm, just because you got Jesus with you doesn't mean the storm's going to stop. What it's going to mean is that Jesus is with you in the middle of that storm. And sometimes we've got to walk through the storm with Jesus. I don't know how far they were away from the boat. I don't know how far Peter got out there. But ever how far it was, they had to walk back to that boat. And I don't know how far it is back to the boat. But can I tell you, keep walking. Keep walking with Jesus. It may be another step or two. It may be another day or two. It may be another month or two. It may be another year or two. It doesn't matter. I've got Jesus with me. And as long as I've got Jesus with me, as long as I am in his presence, as long as I stay hold of him, I'm going to make it to the other side. It's when they climb back into the boat. Come on back, worship team. It's when they climb back into the boat, that's when the miracle happened of the calming of the sea. When they, when they stepped into that boat, when they, when they got, the disciples found out, hey, when we get Jesus in the boat with us, things change. They change. I don't know why storms come in our life, but they do. One of the things I'm asked many times as a pastor, why did this happen? Why did my loved one die? Why, why did I get this report from the doctor? Why did they leave me? Why did, and we get all the whys of, of the tragedy and the situation. I'll just be very blunt and honest with you. And I don't know other than we live in a world filled with sin and the impact of it. You've had things happen in your life. I've had things happen in my life. I don't have an answer for the why. But I know in the midst of the storm, Jesus is with me. I know that no matter what it looks like on the outside or no matter what anybody else tells me, I know that God will help me get through it. You may think the disciples would have known who Jesus was, but they really didn't recognize who he was till he got back in the boat. You read what they said, it says, truly, truly, you are the Son of God. Now we get it. Now we see what, and it's in the middle of a storm. It's in the middle of the problems of life. That's when you learn who Jesus is. That's when you really find out, oh, you may know who he is, but you find out really who he is in your life. That's what the storms do for us. They're not meant to destroy us. God's not going to let that happen. They show us that no matter what we go through, that he is with us through it all. Listen to this. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation That my trials come to only make me strong That's why I say
can say that. That through it all, through the problems and the difficulties, that's where I learned to trust in God. That's where I learned to put my confidence in Him. That's when I felt His hand reach down, even when I was beginning to sink. I don't know what you're facing today. Some of you are going through some storms right now. You're going through some unknown, uncertain times. Times when man would tell you you're not going to make it. The storms say you're not going to, you're going to sink. Well, you may even be beginning to sink, but you ain't sunk. It comes from a relationship with Jesus. It comes from knowing him in a personal way, not religion. Get out of that boat and get into a personal relationship with Jesus. And I, we're going to sing that one more time. And if you're going through a struggle right now, if you're going through a storm right now, if you're going through a situation where, again, fear has gripped you and the uncertainty of the future has gripped you and you, you just don't know, but you know, you may not know what's going to happen, but you know who is there with you. you say, Pastor, I'm, I, I know what that's like. I'm, I'm going through some trouble. I'm going through a storm, a situation. No matter what it may be, as, as they sing that just one more time, the chorus, through it all, I want you to step out and come and join me here at the front. Come on, come on. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. didn't throw Peter out of the boat. Peter got out of the boat. He climbed out himself because he felt the voice of God. He heard the voice of God say, come. And I want you to know, those of you that have come forward, and some of you that should have got out of the boat, you should be down here. Just let me tell you, even when you're beginning to sink, you're not sunk. God's with you. And if you'll reach out to him, he's reaching out to you right now. But nobody can reach out to him for you. You've got to call upon him yourself. And so I'm going to pray for you right now. If you don't know Jesus or your Savior, ask him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Get out of the boat of religion and say, Lord, I, I need you. And you, he's there for you. He's there for you. And if you're going through a storm right now and you say, but I'm doing what God told me to do. You're still going to face the storms. Know this, God is with you. He hasn't forsaken you. He's seen you, he's praying for you, and he's coming to you this morning. And if you'll reach out to him, he's reaching out to you. Let me pray for you here today. Father, thank you. Thank you that through it all, through it all, you are always there for us. And God, I stand with these that are here in this altar today that are going through struggles, going through storms, through situations. That Lord God, they know they've been following you, but yet these problems, difficulties have come. Father, let them know that you see them. Jesus, let them know that you are here with them, that they are not alone, that you've come to them this morning and you're gonna get them through the storm. They may have to walk through the storm a little further, but you're with them. It may be a few more steps, but you're with them. God, they're not alone in this storm as they keep their eyes on you. They keep their eyes on you, Lord God. They're going to make it. They're going to make it. And we give you praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now let me just...
repeat one more thing to those of you especially that came forward. I wish I could tell you the storm's going to be over when you walk out of here. But it may not be. But just know this, you're not alone. And God's walking with you in the middle of your storm. He's walking with you through that storm. That, that's where our faith comes. That no matter what we go through, we know that God's with us if we'll reach out to Him. Don't give up. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't give up on the promises of God. Don't give up on what God's promised you. Don't give up on the voice of God that called you. Don't give up. In the middle of the storm, hang on to Him. And you keep on walking. You may feel the storm, the waves, the chill, but I'm not alone. I've got someone that's with me. I've got someone that's walking with me. And he's the one that speaks to the winds and the waves. He's the one that can calm the raging storm. And I'm going to keep on walking with him in the midst of the storm. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you before we go today. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that you show us. That you are with us in the midst of our storm. So, God, we keep our hand in your hand. The hand of the man from Galilee. Walk with us, Lord God. Show us your ways and we'll be obedient in it. And we give you praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus.